Romania is a wonderful country. A third of the country is covered by forests and even today they are great unspoiled landscapes with mud volcanoes and rare animals. Romania is located at the Black Sea and extends west across the Carpathian Mountains. Sea view is the economic engine of Romania and therefore the most advanced region. But actually there's more and more a wealth gap across the country. A few people become wealthier, however most of the people become poorer. And then there's a third segment of the population, namely those that are living in utter poverty. experienced really amazing things on my trip. Jenny Rasche, a woman who has dedicated her entire life to helping people. And I was a guest at a gypsy's home and was allowed to accompany them in their daily lives and filming an unprecedented privilege. And I got an insight into the mysterious life of Orthodox Christians in Romania. But most important were the people I was able to meet and their stories. Much of what I encountered in Romania was different from what I had expected. Right from the beginning I met by chance a young Romanian guy who willingly revealed to me his views about the Romes. The Romes, or Tsigani as they called themselves, belong to the second largest minority in Romania. They live under unbelievable conditions of poverty. All the more I was surprised by the statement of this young man. I never meant a, a good gypsy, a heartful gypsy, you know? Never. That's why I don't hate them, really, but don't like them either. Uh, not human terrier. Not like us. I see us like, I don't know, something more better than them. I don't know why, I just see them so. And then came the big surprise. His girlfriend came to me and told me that she herself was a Tsigani, a gypsy but had never told him. She asked me to confront him on camera with that fact. Are you aware that your girlfriend is Tsigani, a so-called gypsy? Damn it. <laughs> Are you aware of it and what does it mean for you? Uh, it's something else. Oh damn it, <laughs> she'll kill me for this. I asked Jenny, who has been managing a dedicated help project in Romania since 2003, to introduce me to the world of poverty and especially the situation of the gypsies. I could never dare to go there on my own. It would be extremely dangerous. So she accompanied me to my first station. Yeah. 
Wir werden jetzt versuchen, zumindest die älteste Tochter will die Familie verlassen. Ist jetzt am 14. Will ja unbedingt raus. Wir werden versuchen, ob wir sie vielleicht im kleinen Kinderhaus unterbringen können. Es wird aber immer ein Verhandlungsgeschick werden mit der Familie, ob sie sie rauslassen, weil selbst so eine Wohnung sieht das Jugendamt nicht als Grund an, die Kinder wegzunehmen. We learn two days later that in one of the neighboring rooms a little baby starved to death in agony under terrible conditions. This must have happened at about the time when we were there. The thought of it that this has happened a stone's throw away from us is just unbearable. However, such circumstances are not the exception in this class of population, but rather the rule. We are on our way to Kenenimari, a village 25 miles south of Sibiu. We will visit a family that consists of the two parents and three children. The parents and the son are mentally retarded. The 11-year-old daughter, Joanna, takes care of the family since she's been six years old. <laughs> Wie, wie lebt sie so? Was, was macht sie den ganzen Tag? Bene, Kokopie. Dort ist auch Und ähm, gibt es einen Grund, warum sie ihren behinderten Sohn nicht in die Schule schickt? Ah, okay. Ähm, würde sie ihn denn nicht vermissen, wenn sie ihn mir mitgeben würde? Ja. Sieht sie irgendeine Chance, dass sich ihr Leben ähm, verbessert oder verändert? Since there are no social services available in Romania, the family relies entirely on Joanna, who takes care of all the work in the house. Normally for such a girl it would not be possible to attend school, but due to the supportive help of the children's aid, Joanna may go to school. Perhaps her only chance to escape this cycle of poverty. We continue hastily because Jenny got a call. A 17-year-old girl has been sleeping with her two children at the train station for some days now. She is heavily pregnant, had been abused repeatedly in the past by men. In addition, the temperature is going to drop in the next few days to well below freezing. Minus 30 degrees are not uncommon here. We are leaving the station, a jacket hanging over my camera. Jenny has warned me that it can be dangerous to film here. Attacks by the homeless, but also by the so-called security personnel, are not uncommon. I am thinking that the camera in my hand alone is worth more than most people have here in a year. Also, jetzt haben wir gerade eine junge Frau äh, aus dem Bahnhof aufgelesen. Die wird jetzt erst 18 Jahre alt. Erwartet ihr viertes Kind. Er ist auf der Straße gelandet. Dadurch, dass er eben keine Familie hat, sondern ein Kinderheimkind war, dort weggelaufen ist, in die falschen Kreise geraten ist. Und die bringen wir jetzt erstmal unter, damit sie ja nicht zum Opfer aller Männer wird. Jetzt sollten, ähm, als Erstlösung fällt mir jetzt erstmal ein, dass wir so eine kleine Pension bringen. Wir müssen dann aber auf längere Sicht versuchen, eine Wohnung zu finden und zur Not auch erstmal durch Spenden zu finanzieren, 
damit wir erstmal garantieren können, dass diese Kinder im Winter jetzt nicht draußen erfrieren müssen. Und jetzt fahre ich sie da erstmal hin und will dann erstmal ganz in Ruhe mit ihr sprechen. Schauen, wie sie die Dinge sieht, was sie so als Zukunftsperspektive für sich so, so erdenkt. Ähm, wie das auch ist, wie weit sie überhaupt über irgendwelche Papiere über sich verfügt. Und so weiter und so fort, damit wir wissen, wo wir ansetzen können. Weil das ist halt immer so ein Grundproblem, dass diese Menschen im Prinzip keine Identität haben. Weil sie hat zum Beispiel, soweit ich das weiß, keine einzige, sie hat nicht mal einen Ausweis oder irgend sowas. Und äh, das macht es dann weiter schwieriger. Deeply moves me experiencing this young woman. Denisa is her name. How hopeless her situation is and how brave she is doing her best to be a good mother. She agrees willingly to talk to us. No, we have a lot of money. When I was in the house, I didn't want to stay. I stayed for two or three hours. I went to the house and I stayed there. And then 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 I stayed there. Care is the dream of my mare, dream of my care. I am going to stay with my copie. My heart is the dream of my dream. All that dream is not mine. Dream is not that I have copie. It's hard to love someone when you don't know where to stay. I have to go to the garage and find someone else to stay with. It's hard to get out of here. It's hard to get out of here. What I'm looking for is the most precious thing. What is the most precious thing? What I'm looking for is the most precious thing. What I'm looking for is the most precious thing. What I'm looking for is the most Până pe la vreo trei nu mai am avut probleme cu el și acum, uite, iar am probleme cu el, nu știu ce. Nu pot să-mi imaginez, pentru că alții au și eu nu am, doamna Jenny. Eu nu am măcar nici școală. Alții au care are posibilitate. Că vreau să mă pute acum. Nu, gata. Another unresolved issue in Romania is how they deal with people with disabilities in Romania. They usually are deported into institutions for the disabled and live under terrible conditions. Permits are not available for those places and because these institutions are hidden behind barbed wire, a hidden camera is also impossible. After a long search, we found a former nurse of such a home and were able to convince her to talk to us. She is afraid, does not want to be recognized. We must assure her to keep her identity a secret. Ce am trăit acolo, în acel cămin, nici nu pot exprima cu cuvinte. Oamenii de acolo erau tratați mai rău ca animalele. În mare parte erau legați de paturi. Unii erau legați tot timpul de patul lor, zi și noapte, și mai luau și bătaie de la îngrijitoare. Pe împărsurile erau schimbate odată pe zi, dacă aveau. Erau un miros insuportabil. Ce am văzut acolo a fost mai rău decât ce am văzut în 50 de ani mei. Până în ziua de azi, încă mai visez ce urât este acolo. Dar nu mai pot să vorbesc despre asta, e prea mult. Now, it would be too easy to pass judgment over the Romanians. And it is not just a Romanian problem. Similar to anywhere in the world, money for charity is lacking in Romania. Corruption in Romania is Additionally, a significant problem and so social EU support does often not arrive where it is really needed. Private organizations, just as um, the children help, are often the only help that, as in this case, people can hope for. We visit Narcisa, a girl who was born handicapped and because she weighed less than 600 grams, that's roughly 20 ounces, she was hospitalized. From there she would have been deported to an asylum for the disabled. Literally at the last minute she was rescued by Jenny and placed in a foster care. 
Also die erste Zeit verbrachte ich eigentlich nur so, dass sie immer wieder in die Hand guckte, gar nichts weiter machte. Und ähm, als dann der Prozess der Selbstwahrnehmung wieder aufgenommen wurde durch die Stimulation ihres Umfeldes, hat sie sich ständig selbst verletzt am Anfang. Sie robbte über den Teppich, sie hat sich ihr ganzes Gesicht zerkratzt, sie hat sich selber in, in Arme und Beine gebissen, äh, Haare ausgerissen. Aber das hat jetzt wieder sehr nachgelassen und sie hospitalisiert überhaupt nicht mehr. Also sie wiegt sich nicht mehr ständig hin und her. Das war halt auch früher, wenn man sie ins Bett gelegt hat, konnte nicht einschlafen, ohne dass sie die ganze Zeit den Körper eben hin und her wiegt. Und das ist alles vorbei. Und das haben wir inzwischen schon gut hingekriegt. Man sieht dann auch, wie sich das, das abbaut, dann auch die Schäden in einer liebevollen Umgebung und vor allem durch Stimulation. <lacht> Now it was really amazing to see how this girl had evolved through a healthy environment, from a disabled baby to a funny little girl. It's amazing how a healthy environment could compensate for a disability. But shortly after that I met the exact opposite. We met on the same day a boy who was born in perfect health and was made disabled by poverty and severe abuse. This boy had spent most of his life locked up in a small room between rags and waste, caged like an animal. This boy has spent most of his life locked up in a room between rags and waste. He has nothing, not even a name. And at some point in all this misery, the spark of life extinguished in his soul. This boy is 16 years old and has the mind of a three-year-old child. It's just not really understandable what I encounter here, but there are also sparks of hope. Jenny takes me to two young women who could find their way out of this nightmare with the help of the children's aid. I am a pedagogy, I want to be a social worker and I want to go further. I am a teacher for 10 years, in a way, depending on the children, as you have also. And it helps me, and I think I have a house as we have a house, 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 as we have a house. Dein Leben war ja nicht immer so, wie es jetzt gerade ist. Du hast ja früher in, ja, in anderen, in schwierigeren Umständen gelebt. Kannst du dich denn noch daran erinnern, wie das, wie das damals war? Da. Traiam in cisne die, in trocotina, was ich sag. Nur era chiar așa de rau și ai venit în cinătie și mai avea ai trei pungi de cadouri și te-ai întâlnit. Ich versuche die Bilder in der Vergangenheit, wie ich sie vorgefunden habe, die Mädchen, ich versuche das immer wieder auch ein bisschen abzuschalten in meinem Kopf, weil ich weiß nicht, inwieweit sie das wirklich in vollem Umfang wahrgenommen haben, aber ich war damals erwachsen und ich hatte zwei Augen und die haben gut funktioniert. Oh Gott. Es war fürchterlich, total verloren. Ich will nicht sagen verwahrlos, das stimmt nicht, aber besonders Andrea, schwer krank, vollkommen am Ende körperlich und einfach aussichtslos. Georgie starrte mich die ganze Zeit an. Das war irgendwie so, warum so klein? 
und so hilflos. Einfach hilflos. Hilflos und verlassen in einer riesigen Welt voller Menschen. Und irgendwie wie als ob sie vergessen worden wären in all dem da. But what about the rural regions, many miles away from the big city? A few miles from Sibiu in the mountains, I found people who actually live in caves. These people also live in extreme poverty. The caves had been digged with spades into the compacted sand. They live very shy, withdrawn and are extremely religious. Hastily I shoot a few pictures from another world. My company reminds me to hurry. She cannot guarantee anything if we should get caught. Inspired by images of saints in the caves, I decide to ask church for advice. The Orthodox Church is the largest religious community in Romania. Almost 90% of the population belong to it. They see themselves as the only true doctrine of God, as the original church, as the only way to God. On our way to Sibiu, I spot an Orthodox monastery shortly before Sibiu. I decide to get out of the car and walk the distance from the road to the monastery. It is a huge site with incredibly beautiful churches, but almost completely deserted. I sneak quietly into the church and witness a church entirely without parishioners. A post-apocalyptic feeling comes over me. They discover me and invite me kindly to eat with them. A priest is willing to talk to me and to answer my questions. Poor people are different people. Yeah. Un pic. Dacă dânsul se grăbește, poți să mănânci înainte. Dacă nu, mâncăm când facem rugăciunea. If, uh, if you are in a hurry, you can eat now. If you yeah. are not in a hurry, you can eat with us together. How long, how long does it take? Cât timp ne mai apără când mâncăm? 10 minute. 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 minute.
It would be extremely dangerous to enter, for example, for myself a Rome settlement. The more astonished I am when I receive following call in my hotel. Hi, du hör mal, weißt du, was ich dich fragen wollte? Du könntest auch, wenn du möchtest, bei einer Oma von mir neben, neben dem Müllplatz, die wohnen neben dem Müllplatz, du könntest auch dort übernachten, wenn du möchtest. Echt jetzt? Aber damit, <lacht> damit habe ich jetzt gar nicht gerechnet. Ja, ich weiß, das klingt krass, aber also ich habe mit ihnen gesprochen und normal machen sie das auch nicht, aber ja. man hat mir dort versichert, dass äh, man dir nichts tun wird. <lacht> okay, kann ich mich da drauf verlassen dann auch? Naja, das äh, siehst du dann, ja. Okay. Ich denke, ja. Okay. Kann ich da auch äh, filmen und Bilder machen und so? Also, ich habe sie gefragt und sie haben gesagt, ja, das wäre für sie erstmal soweit okay. Nur, ich möchte dich bitten, dass du nicht alleine durch die Siedlung gehst, auch nicht Fotos zu machen und so, dass du dich immer ein bisschen in Begleitung befindest. Das ist einfach für dich auch sicherer. I will live with Dan and Dana. Dana is the only one in the settlement who has a regular job. She works for $400 a month, which makes her one of the top earners in this settlement. The gypsies in Romania are usually day laborer for $5 a day of hardest work. No one in Romania typically offers a gypsy a job to normal wages. Dana works for the children's aid as a caretaker and this is indeed the basic idea of Jenny. To create a structure in which the gypsies themselves are empowered to solve the problems themselves. The next morning I am picked up by a horse carriage and I am taken to Cascada. Cascada is the trash dump of Sibiu and the gypsies have built an illegal settlement there. Every few years the bulldozers arrive and the houses are demolished and burned with gasoline. A few weeks later people return again and rebuild their shelters. Where else should they go? A short stroll through the settlement. I need some time to digest the first impressions. Where am I? Europe? It looks more like Calcutta or the slums of Rio de Janeiro. We visit a family whose house burned down a year ago. The three-year-old daughter burned to death in her bed. A son suffered severe burns. He hasn't been talking ever since. Scars are on his face. He is in constant pain. Nine people to perhaps a hundred square foot and no toilet. Electric power is only available if there is money for the gasoline with which the generator is operated. But even the generator has been broken for months. The cottage is not heated in the cold of winter, as wood is very scarce. It is hardly enough just to cook. In winter there will be therefore down to minus 30 degrees in the cabin. The family will spend most of the day in bed. Even the most primitive basic tasks, such as washing clothes, are no longer possible. Very often the weakest of them will starve or freeze to death. I arrived in Dan's hut and they are lighting the fire. It has become dark. Dan's waiting for Dana who is to bring gasoline for the generator so that we have light. The last candle stub is burning down slowly. In the light of the candle I see a cockroach. Well, it could be worse. It is now completely dark in the hut. A subdued mood is spreading. Dan fiddles with his cell phone. The guys drink home-brewed hooch. 
And finally, gasoline arrives. Family comes to life. Resting time is over. Actually, it is pretty similar as in any other family in the world. They cook, wash, and chat. In the background, the TV runs constantly. I find myself thinking, hmm. Without the generator, it was much more comfortable. And yet, for the gypsies, it is pure luxury and they enjoy it as often as they can afford it. And this family is the only one in this settlement that can afford that at all. An exercise book as a dustpan. Why not? Education as a tool for everyday use. In general, I experience the gypsies as very pragmatic. <laughs> Dana earns in her job in the children's aid, sometimes on a weekend more than her husband Dan throughout the month. Most of the other gypsy families are sitting in their dark huts without electricity or warm fire and without water, because that is already frozen by now. The noise of the generator echoes through the whole settlement. It doesn't seem to disturb anyone. The time approaches midnight. A bed is built for me. Despite my protests, they do not allow me to sleep on the floor on my sleeping pad. They move together, even a little closer in the remaining beds, as usual. I do not sleep well at night. It is restless in the room. Even outside, voices and movements can be heard. The others do not seem to be overly concerned by that. The next morning dawns, the remaining petrol drives the generator, the television is on, the hut awakens. that beneath all the seeming normality of electricity and heat there is a deep resignation, a deep hopelessness that is almost tangible. The family leaves the house and I use those moments to pass through the settlement once more. There are words running through my head from the two gypsy children from the neighboring hut that I interviewed the other day, unobserved by their parents. Yeah, 
las colegă și la asta mi am uitat nici nu Ea nu e acum în loc în această mică colibă. Ne mutăm, noi nu avem mâncare și mama mă trimite la șerșit. O dată am căutat și în container mâncare. I'm on my way to another gypsy settlement north of Sibiu. My presence in Cascada has spread. Also, one of the better of families in Shura wants to house me now for a day and a night. Shura, as I learn, had, after much pressure from the children's aid, obtained electricity and water recently. What was really especially painful in Shura was the influence of alcohol. About 90% of the adult poor population drinks a lot of alcohol, would be probably be defined as alcoholics by any definition. And they drank a lot that night and smoked almost continuously. And the higher the alcohol level rose, the more the children were forgotten and abused. I stopped at that point with filming because I was really uncomfortable and felt deeply embarrassed. And I remember exactly how I thought to myself, adults will never change, not in a hundred years. But what about the children? The next morning, six o'clock in the morning, I am visiting the so-called little children's home. Everybody helps, even the daughters of Tabitha and Jenny. Also viele dieser kleinen, besonders kleinen Kinder kommen zu uns nicht, weil ihre Eltern sie nicht lieben würden, sondern weil oft die Lebensumstände zu hart sind für so ein kleines Wesen und einfach der Organismus noch nicht stark genug ist, dem was entgegenzusetzen. Dadurch versuchen es die Mütter meistens erstmal trotzdem das Kind mit nach Hause zu nehmen in ihre jeweilige Siedlung. Manchmal geht das gut, manchmal geht es nicht gut. Wenn sich das dann noch assoziiert mit Problemen in der Familie und das Kind hat einen relativ schwachen Organismus, was das angeht, wird das Kind relativ schnell krank werden. Und dann folgt eine Abkettung von Einweisungen ins Krankenhaus und irgendwann wird sich die Mutter als unfähig selber befinden und lässt das Kind immer längere Zeit dort und das Kind verwahrlost dort psychisch. Und äh, bringt dann eben, fängt sich eine Krankheit nach der anderen ein, weil es ist, selbst wenn es dann gesundet ist, trotzdem in einer Atmosphäre, wo immer zu Kranke sind. Und wir versuchen hier als allererstes erstmal den, diesen Teufelskreis eben zu durchbrechen und dann eben diese Kinder gesund zu pflegen, um sie wieder fit zu machen, bei ihren Eltern leben zu können, wenn sie ein bisschen größer sind. Das ist eigentlich so grund, grundsätzlich der Ansatz. Man halt sagt, man versucht eine Entmutterung zu vermeiden. Und man versucht es zu vermeiden, dass das Kind seine Identität verliert, weil letztendlich äh, macht es für mich keinen Sinn, Kinder, Eltern wegzunehmen, die es lieben. 
noch nicht für sorgen können. Da muss man halt brückenmäßig eine Möglichkeit finden und dieses Haus ist sozusagen, also wir sind kein Kinderheim, wir sind quasi eine Parkstelle für Kinder, die eigentlich ins Heim gekommen wären, wenn nicht. Und die aber eigentlich Muttis haben, die auf sie warten und sich auch freuen, sie wieder zu bekommen. Das ist so unser, unser Ansatz. The children attend a regular public kindergarten, which is run by a Christian organization. I take a ride there and I am hoping to have a conversation with one of the teachers. We have uh, 50 this year, 50 children, only for kindergarten, three groups. And the one from uh, uh, nursery, they are like 20, I guess. So we, are, we have almost 70 children. And um, how many of them are Roma children? I don't know. None. No, no, we have no Roma children here. Okay. Um, but the children we just uh, brought, they are Roma children, no? I don't know. Okay. Do you they think are. So we have a nursery now. <laughs> okay. Two or three, I guess. <laughs> they don't seem to be Roma children. So there is no, is there any difference between the Roma children and the Romanian children? Depends. Where I worked, it was a big difference. They were dirty, they don't, they didn't have clothes. They didn't go to school or kindergarten. So here they are more integrated than in other parts of Romania. And what is your experience about the, the Romanian people and the Roma? What is their relationship? Uh, depends. In the village where I work, they were not very good seen because they used to steal and be um, angry and uh, they spoke very ugly and they were not seen very good by the others. Mm -hmm. But depends, I guess. So yeah. the, the Romanians, they, they did have reason to, to um, have problem, problems. Yeah, but maybe they are like this because they don't have money or food or they were very angry about this and maybe because the, the society d don't help them very much. So maybe they have a reason to be angry and if you don't have enough food or money and they have many children, like seven, eight. Mm. Yeah. Um, what would you, do you have any idea um, how to solve this problem in, with, with the Roma in Romania? <laughs> maybe school is one of the reasons. If children go to school and then maybe they will find a job when they are teenagers, they, maybe they could solve a part of the problem. Yeah. Because uh, the adults, they don't want to go to work anymore because they, they are not uh, uh, received. They don't receive good jobs because they are Roma, but children, if they have school or high school, I guess that they could get a job. Mm -hmm. Why do the Romas do not go to school right now at the moment? <laughs> this is a good question. They are not used, first of all, because they, if they don't go to kindergarten for three years, they, it's hard to go to school each day. Maybe they don't have clothes or... Um, I don't know, um, and maybe because of the, their parents, they put them to work. Where I used to work with Gypsy, they, they um, had to go in the forest and take uh, trees and cut the trees and sell them for money. Or they had to go to look up for mushrooms in the forest. So they had to go to work to help their families. We pick up the children after the nursery and take them back to the other children in the small children's house. A dozen of them are there, plenty of hungry mouths waiting to be fed. So I, I was really impressed by what is done here. 
Jenny was pregnant at that time in the seventh month, had recently graduated from university, was planning her doctorate and also took care of her own huge family. So how could I easily summarize her activities in Sibiu? I thought about that and I came to a conclusion. She actually completely replaced the non-existent social system in Sibiu. And what I realized most clearly is that the key for a better future for an entire segment of the population, such as the Tsigani, clearly lies in the schooling of the children. A kind of long-term investment in the future. And that's really the main focus of this children's help. So they picked me up the next day to show me the probably most important core project. The so-called Big Kids Home. A kind of comprehensive school care with food, homework and tutoring and activities. About 60 children come here each and every day. The food is important uh, because sometimes all the food they get in a day is here in the center. Everything they eat for a day receive here. We have the problem sometimes that uh, the, the children that, that come, they receive food in their plates and they do not know that they can eat it and it is for their own health. But they get used to it in time. get a real example of what they can do in life. They don't have such a role models at home uh, because their parents don't have an education so we try to to cover that. It's not easy because uh, it's not uh, necessarily the problem uh, of their intellectual capacity. It's more like uh, um, the emotional part and uh, because of the emotional problems these kids have, uh, their uh, mind doesn't work the same as usual children in the schools. So uh, we have to, uh, always to keep in mind that they, uh, they don't live a normal life, they have their own problems, and we cannot always impose what to do. Maybe sometimes they do not want to do their homework. We cannot oblige them. It is hard to imagine that many of these children had to find their meager meals in the trash cans until recently and could neither write or read. Would this place cease to exist? It would be that way once more again. Another project also provides homework, assistance and tutoring. There are only Romanian children here from problematic backgrounds, so that they may get a chance to go to university one day. După revoluție, industria a falimentat aproape în întregime. Multe familii au rămas fără servici. Foarte mulți ani n-au avut posibilitatea să mai studieze, să-și facă uh, studii, să poată, să poată să lucreze undeva. În plus, cei care au cele mai grave probleme sunt cei care provin din familii defavorizate, care și cu ani în urmă au fost mai necăjiți și uh, cu mai puțină inteligență. Și ăștia nu își găsesc nici un pic de lucru pe piața muncii. Și ei practic nu au niciun sprijin material. So much of what needs to be organized. Things that we take for granted. Thus, for example, the monthly fee for a bus costs around $60. A price that 
many Romanians simply cannot afford and therefore do not send their children to school. So this shuttle service also runs only through donations. But does that really work? I had the chance to accompany a Rome boy in his maybe most important day of his life. The entrance examination to the prestigious art school in Sibiu. And I think I was even more excited than he was. Also es steht für ihn sein ganzes Leben auf dem Spiel, weil die Problematik ist, Kinder wie er haben es sehr, sehr schwierig, an gute Schulen zu kommen, höhere Bildungswege einzuschlagen. Und wenn so ein Talent schon in der fünften Klasse entdeckt wird und entwickelt wird, dann sind seine Chancen unheimlich groß, dass er eines Tages nicht nur das Gymnasium abschließen kann, sondern eben anschließend auch studieren kann, sprich den höchsten Bildungsweg einschlagen kann. Und natürlich wird das sein ganzes Leben verändern und beeinflussen. Children who want to come to our school, they must pass uh, some exams. A drawing um, who is a part of um, this exam for, for him. You know. It's about uh, drawing and uh, another composition. As you can see, it's a, it's a composition with figures, with, uh, with persons. What do you think about um, people like her, who, who work um, especially with Rome team? Well, I think it's uh, very, very special work. And um, I'm impressed about uh, this kind of, of work, you know. Yeah. Uh, because um, it's a special work, it's a difficult work. Yeah. <laughs> Ich denke, unsere Beteiligung war insofern, dass wir ihn immer dazu ermutigt haben, die Schule zu besuchen, generell eine Bildung anzustreben. Und sicherlich den größten Verdienst ähm, hat unsere Lehrerin Daniela Pitario, die äh, sein Zeichentalent sofort erkannt hat und ihm, also uns auch immer wieder erklärt hat, wie gut er das kann und dass es Sinn machen würde, ihn hierher zu bringen, eben diese Aufnahmeprüfung zu machen. Und wie sich zeigt, haben unsere Lehrer durchaus recht. Insofern, wir haben den Lehrer ausgesucht und der Lehrer hat das Talent erkannt. Ich würde sagen, eine Abkettung glücklicher Entscheidung. Thank you for joining me on my journey. And perhaps you want to change things yourself, want to help. And there are so many things you could do. Firstly, The children's aid, of course, always welcomes donations, because without it, their work would be impossible to do. On the other hand, it also helps a lot if you share the link to this video to friends and family. So finally, I would like to show you a couple of scenes that are, in my opinion, inspiring and reason for hope. And I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. With love, Dirk Liesenfeld. So you've been thinking about our talk we had before. A little and, bit. And there was something that, that changed in you or, or that became clear? Yeah, it became clear. Yeah, do you want to talk about that? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, about the gypsies. Um, they are not, everybody is not so bad. Uh, not any gypsy is so bad. Um, what should I say? You should just meet the right guy, the right person. And um, I think uh, it doesn't matter really what kind you are, what species, Tigoiner, Romain, a black, white, it doesn't really matter. If you can understand each other, it's, it's perfect, it's great. It's, yes, it, it is very important to, to work uh, with uh, Rome children uh, because they I think they um, have the right to to uh, uh, to live an equal life with uh, with uh, uh, the Romanian Jews. About poor uh, poor people and the rich people. The point is that if you are rich, okay, you are rich. God give gave you things, all right. 
but there are there are a lot of poor people that need things so you have to give how uh, uh, somehow you have to give give from what you have to the poor people that need that things maybe so, Romanians should uh, let that, uh, let let go their pride that they are Romanians and the other are gypsies and maybe just concern about them like people and not about their aspect or because in the end they are people like us and some of them are good some of them are bad but also the Romanian they are good and bad so maybe we have to go beyond their appearance and to just see them like us <laughs> Eu sper, dacă Dumnezeu vrea să schimbe și viața mea și locul ăsta. Ich habe die Hoffnung nie aufgegeben, dass der liebe Gott irgendwann unsere Situation verändert.